Hello and welcome to the Auto Car Show. Now loads of vehicles have come and tried to shake up and dethrone the king of the MUV segment, the Innova. But even though it's been around the longest, the Innova has firmly held on to its crown. Well, the latest entrant, the Ivalia, is here with us today and we're pitting them both together to see if the Ivalia can really shake up the Innova. Though they're both in the same segment, they're both very different looking. And although the Innova really isn't a beauty pageant winner, when compared to the Ivalia, it lands up looking good. Now when you put these two side by side, you begin to realize why the Ivalia looks very much more van-like, whereas the Innova more car-like. Let's begin at the rear, where the Ivalia has this big square tailgate, very boxy proportions, whereas the Innova far better proportioned, it's got a smaller tailgate, with both of them look pretty similar. As you walk down them, you realize the length is almost similar of the two, but the biggest difference really is in the front. Where the Innova has the steeply raked A-pillar and a lower bonnet line, the Ivalia has this short, stubby, high front bonnet and a much squarer roof line and a much more upright A-pillar, which gives it that van-like look. As far as looks go, it's definitely the Innova that wins. On the inside, the Ivalia's interior feels open and airy from the front seat with the large expanses of glass and the high roof line. The dash is practical and all the controls and even the gear lever fall to hand pretty easily. There are efforts to spruce it up with a matte silver plastic on the central console, but other than that, it's pretty plain. And whether you talk of quality or just the way it looks, this interior feels leagues ahead of the Ivalia. The forward beige and grey go well together and the Innova's cabin looks more luxury than the Ivalia. The top end Innova also offers more features than the Ivalia. The only feature that the Ivalia has that the Innova doesn't is a reverse camera which is actually very handy. The Innova's cabin is also easier to access and you don't really have to climb into it. However, there are some advantages to the high up position in the Ivalia. The driving position in the Ivalia is very van-like, the steering is way more tilted, you sit much higher up, you have a very commanding view of the road. And ergonomically, I think the gear lever and everything feels really nice, falls to hand easily. You do sit lower in the Innova, but the range of seat and steering adjustments make it easy to find a good driving position. The seats themselves are more comfortable too. Under the hood, the Ivalia has the smaller engine. Though it's a 1000cc smaller than the Innova and has 17 bhp less, it produces an identical amount of torque. The Ivalia is also much lighter in weight, which makes it feel pretty good out on the road. This K9K engine is really quite a beauty. It's responsive, lift your foot off, put it down again, car gets a move on, wherever you are in the range, it's a very linear acceleration. And it makes the Ivalia very easy to drive in the city. You know, you can amble around easily and you can get a move on without having to drop gears. So it's very comfortable in the city. Whilst it does well in stop-start traffic conditions, when you're out on the highway, the Ivalia's smaller capacity becomes quite apparent. It runs out of breath faster and you do have to drop gears often to overtake, especially when it's fully loaded. The Innova's engine has a bit of lag below the 1600 RPM mark, so if you're sort of ambling around in city traffic, you lift your foot off, you want to get a move on, you do feel the need to drop a gear. But once you're past that 1600 RPM mark, the Innova pulls quite cleanly and the great part about this engine is the way it cruises, you know, the top end, it's really nice out on the highway. The only thing is once you pass about 120 in fifth gear, the engine gets really noisy and thrashy and you consistently search for the sixth gear. Despite the lag, the Innova doesn't ever feel uncomfortable in traffic and overall you find it's the better one to drive. That's until you have to park it in a tight spot or take a U-turn. The steering is heavy and the Innova requires more three-point turns than the Ivalia. Ivalia's steering is really light, you know, it makes the car feel very nimble and manoeuvrable. You can nip in and out of traffic. 
quite easily, change lanes very quickly. And the beauty about this car is that the turning circle is absolutely wonderful. So parking becomes very easy in this one. However, that light feeling in the city doesn't really inspire confidence out on the highway. The steering lacks feel at dead centre. And the Ivalia's massive square side surface makes it prone to being rocked by the wind. The height also makes the roll around corners more pronounced, forcing you to back off many a times. There really is no comparison when it comes to dynamics. The Innova is the clear leader. It feels stable, planted and so much more solidly built. It gives you a large sense of security whilst taking corners or flat out on the highway. You can push it with a sense of confidence. The excellent body control not only helps the handling, but it really helps the backseat comfort too. The back seat of the Innova is nice and spacious and you have enough leg room but should you want more you can always slide the seat back if there's no one really in the third row. Three abreast will also be comfortable. You know the seats themselves are easy for long journeys but what's really good is the ride quality. You know you don't get tossed around in the back seat it sort of irons out the road it glides over the bumps and potholes and that's what makes the long journeys really comfortable ones. One would imagine that the Ivalia with its larger dimensions would be a lot more spacious and the third row is. Passengers there will be definitely more comfortable but in the middle row it's a different story. The Ivalia feels spacious on the inside up front because of the large glass areas but when you sit in the middle row the window is actually quite tiny and even though there's a lot of width at the back the seat doesn't go all the way to the door because of the sliding doors. So. It's actually narrow and three abreast would be quite tight. Plus, there's no armrest, so your hand is sort of left hanging. But the biggest, biggest downside in the backseat of the Ivalia is this. If you don't want the AC on or you're feeling sick in the back, there's no escape. The window doesn't open beyond an inch. In fact, the middle row leaves you feeling quite caged in and the visibility to the front isn't that good either. There's also no grab handle for the passenger or a hand rest on the door which makes longer trips a bit uncomfortable. As far as the ride goes, while it's reasonably good at low speed, it still does get caught out by the sharper bumps and ridges. And it doesn't give you the cushion feel of the Innova. At higher speeds, it definitely has a lot more vertical movement and tosses you up more. Well, I've driven them both quite extensively and compared them for you, but there's still some things to consider. Like the Ivalia is more fuel efficient than the Innova and of course on the whole it's cheaper. So for those with a BDI on the wallet, the Ivalia does make a whole load of sense. Plus it's a very easy city car, it's nimble, it's easy to manoeuvre, the turning circle is great making it easy to park and of course performance in the city is pretty good too. But chances are when you do have an MUV you're going to want to take it out on the highway quite a bit. And that's where the Ivalia really doesn't match up to the Innova. The Innova is just a fantastic cruiser. And that's not all. When you look at the overall picture, be it ride, be it performance, be it handling, be it comfort, be it interiors, features, almost every department, the Innova is just leagues ahead of the Ivalia and remains the king of the segment.